Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a CPU upgrade on a uh, Dell Inspiron desktop. I'm just get it disconnected here. So this is a Dell Inspiron model 545. Now I got this computer from a client who had bought a new computer and basically just wanted me to take their files off of this computer and move it to the new one, so I did that. So according to the uh, the front of this, it came with a Core 2 quad processor in it, but at the moment it just has a dual core Pentium running at 2 gigahertz, and the computer it works, but uh, it's very slow. So what I'm going to be doing is replacing that uh, Core 2 Duo CPU with a quad-core processor that's actually a, a Xeon processor. It's a processor that's intended to go into a workstation computer or a server computer. Let me see. It's a little bit cramped in there, but I think I can get it done. The, um, the motherboard is a Socket 775 motherboard. This server processor um, is a 771 processor, meant to go into a Socket 771 motherboard. I bought this on eBay. It was only, I think, $13, which is very cheap. It's a, it's a quad-core running at 3 gigahertz, so it'll be a nice, uh, nice upgrade. It's a Xeon X5450 processor and yeah, 3 gigahertz. So this is $13 uh, at the moment. This is May of 2018. There's a few slightly faster processors that are available on eBay. The um, 5460 and 5470, uh, they're each about 100 megahertz faster but they're also a lot more expensive. They're not really expensive. They're, I think they're $40 and $50 at the moment, but um, that little speed increase is not really worth it to me. Um, I'd rather have a very, very cheap processor that I can put in this computer as opposed to one that's quite a bit more expensive and just slightly faster. So in addition to, uh, to the processor, I'm gonna need one of these here. Um, it's called a socket 771 to 775 mod sticker. It's very, very small. Um, I'll try and find a, a nice close-up of it and put it up on the screen. So this little sticker will actually go onto the back of the, uh, on the bottom of the, uh, the processor right there. And it will, I think what it does is it covers up most of the pins in this little vertical area right here. And I'm not sure about this, but I think it might swap two of them. Um, depending on what you read online, it does, it's supposed to do different things. Um, but basically you put the sticker on, you put it in the, the motherboard and it works. Now this doesn't work with all Socket 775 motherboards. I looked it up and this model Dell, um, apparently it does work. Um, the motherboard has to kind of support it and the BIOS has to support it well enough in order for the computer to recognize the processor. Um, I'll put some links uh, in the description below the video. There's BIOS upgrades that you uh, that you can do, um, and there's websites that tell you, they give you basically a list of all the computers that this works with and what the requirements are. So before you go buying it and trying it, you can see if your computer is uh, is capable of being made to, uh, to work with this processor. All right, uh, let's get the, uh, the cooler off here. I'm not sure if that's gonna reach. Nope, all right, I have to use a regular screwdriver. I'm just going to get in here and take out the CPU cooler. Go back and finish that up. I think this one had a little bit more to come out. Okay. So I will disconnect the CPU cooling fan from the motherboard. And there's the cooler. All right. So there's the processor. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the, the thermal compound on it. 
just so it doesn't get everywhere while I'm working. majority of it. Go ahead and also cool, clean it off the cooler. I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, lever over, push it down, over and up. Alright, so that's the dual core processor. Um, so in order to get this processor, this new Xeon, to fit in there, what I have to do is take off a couple of plastic nubs that are there uh, right now on the, uh, the CPU socket. So whenever I take this out, the, uh, the arrow points to that direction, same as this arrow here, and it'll go down in there but I have to take out these little plastic nubs, otherwise it's not going to fit. This processor doesn't have a, a spot for the little nubs to go into uh, on, the, uh, on the sides of it. So to get those out, what I'm going to do is um, use an X-Acto knife. Some people call these uh, art knives uh, to cut them out. I'm going to leave that dual core processor in there just to cover up the, uh, the pins on the, uh, the CPU socket so I don't accidentally damage them. This will at least make it unlikely that I'll damage them. So I'm taking out that little bit of plastic on the socket. All right, so for this section right here, I accidentally zoomed in my camera on my phone to 3x. So uh, the framing is just completely messed up and a lot of it you can't see. Basically what, uh, what I'm doing at this section is taking off this little piece of plastic right here and this little piece of plastic right here so that the, uh, the Xeon processor can fit in this socket. All right, this is taken from an eBay seller. Um, basically, you can see where the, uh, the sticker is supposed to go on the processor. Nice close-up. And yeah, the processor, uh, as of right now, the, you know, mid-May 2018 was $13. Um, this sticker, um, and that's on eBay, this sticker on eBay, I think was about $250. It's very, very cheap. And if you've got an old system like this, it's certainly worth the upgrade at that price. So I'm going to use a little plastic nubby thing. I'm going to get it approximately correct. Hold it down, take out the tweezers, and I should be able to then get it stuck down in the right spot. I'd feel a little bit better if that was more stuck down. It seems to be moving a bit. All right, I'm not going to mess with it too much. Once I get the processor in the socket, it will be held in place just by tension on it. So if I turn this thing over, is it going to fall out? So the arrow on the CPU needs to go towards this corner of the socket, the corner with the arm on it. So I'm just going to drop it in there like that. Okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and put some thermal compound on the processor and get the cooler back on. Okay, so in general, when you're putting thermal compound on a processor, what I do is put a pea-sized amount in the middle, just enough to uh, spread out and cover the whole processor. 
And that happens when you put the CPU cooler on top of it and screw it down. It just pushes out the thermal compound to cover evenly. Go around and get them each started. And I'll give them each a pretty much equal amount of turns. back in the CPU coolers fan to the motherboard. Right down there. Well, let's give it a try. Power on. That beep was a good sound. Very good sign. It means the motherboard posted Sounds like it's booting into Windows. I haven't got my monitors on, though. Yep, it's booting into Windows. So ordinarily, I would have gone into the BIOS to see what it detected. Um, Right-click on Start and go to Device Manager. Let's see what it's detecting as far as the processor goes. Okay, so in Device Manager, under Processors, Looks like it's still detecting a dual core processor. Okay, let's um, restart the computer and go into the BIOS. Okay, so it's rebooting. I'm gonna press F2 on the keyboard because that's how you get into the BIOS on a Dell. All right, so system info. Great, okay, it's seen it as a uh, Intel Xeon X5450 running at 3 gigahertz. Okay, that's uh, that's great. Um, let me see, I don't think there's anything else I need to do. This processor doesn't support hyper-threading or um, speed step, I don't believe. Um, yeah, so there's nothing in the BIOS I need to change anyway. So let's reboot, go back into Windows. Maybe we need to remove the um, the processors, uh, the two dual core processors in Device Manager in order to get them to redetect. Okay, so I'm going to right click on Start and let's go back to Device Manager. Processors, oh, there we go. It detected it. So there's four processors showing up because it's a four core processor X5450, 3 gigahertz. So that was relatively a painless process. Um, what I'll do next is run IDA64 to make sure uh, the system is still stable. I had run it before. I did the CPU upgrade just to be sure you know the rest of the computer was in good shape. This computer only has four gigabytes of RAM. I'll probably upgrade it to eight gigabytes. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use this computer myself or just sell it because with eight gigabytes of RAM and a quad-core three gigahertz processor, this is still a, uh, a very capable computer, even though it's, what, 10 or 11 years old at this point. It's still got some usable life left. So I'll put links down in the description of the video to um, find the information about compatibility with different motherboards and computers with this processor and the slightly faster ones as well as links to uh, what you need to search for to find the processor and the um, 771 to 775 mod stickers on eBay. Thanks for watching.